Top of the morning, y'all. Hope you're doing great. I have a follow-up for the red heifer today. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. And one of the most important videos, I'm just going to air this out. It's going to be a little bit longer of a video. It's Saturday morning, so you've got time to sit on the couch and digest this stuff. Um, this video is sponsored by nobody, but I just want to say there are so few conservative companies that will actually sponsor conservative content. I've got some dang good ones. I'm just going to link them below. Any way you can support them with Backyard Butchers, uh, Ready Pantry, First Cup Coffee. These are Patriot companies, y'all. Any way you can support them whatsoever is supporting me and it's just supporting our community that we have. So I really appreciate y'all doing that. The links are below. For about 30 days now, I've been bombarded with messages asking for updates on the Red Heifer. We did this video um, about a month ago, got almost a million views. And I know it's a huge, huge topic. Um, until yesterday, I found an article from a guy named Michael Snyder, who I follow very closely. And I want to say this, y'all don't have to agree completely with everything somebody says, especially if they mention a timeline. A lot of people have studied Revelation way more than you and I ever have. And some of y'all, you know, consider yourselves to be experts on it or whatever. The only thing I'll tell y'all to beware of is when somebody mentions a specific timeline of Jesus is definitely going to come back here and never here or here, here. No, no. Jesus is going to come back whenever the heck he wants to, pre, mid, or trib, whenever he decides because he does not owe y'all or me an explanation on when or why he comes back, period. So people that dissect it too much and say it has to, you know, he has to come back in this. Some people I actually know, some Christians, um, and I've had to really, really get stern with them, I swear, y'all, they are more hung up on being right about the return of Christ and the exact timeline than they are with actually following and obeying him. That's when you get into some very sinful and very uh, destructive territory right there. It doesn't matter who's right. The fact is that he's coming back. Amen? The fact is not I'm right or I know exactly this timeline or nanner nanner, I told you so. If you want to go into the clouds looking at everybody saying, I told you so, then <laughs> being a true Christ follower probably isn't for you because that's not what it's about. This is about humility and the eager expectation of his return. Just wanted to put a little disclaimer out there on that. So a lot of people were speculating that the sacrifice was actually going to take over during Passover. When I kept saying on the last video, if this happens, it's going to be very, very bad. It did not happen, obviously, because it would have made a very, very big ruckus, but that does not mean that it could be any day now still. Uh, Michael Snyder said in this article yesterday, he said, I'm entirely convinced that it is eventually coming with the sacrifice. But the truth is that the Ark of the Covenant discovery is going to be much bigger. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Ark of the Covenant uh, in this video as well. First, though, the Red Heifer. As far as Red Heifer goes, according to the Third Temple Institute, the Red Heifer can't be used in such a sacrifice until it's at least three years old. Okay, those are the guidelines. And every single day that passes, there's a risk that one single hair, more than what's allowed, which is like, what, four or five hairs, could grow and all of a sudden, you know, the, the whole thing is wasted. So the clock is ticking. Now, here's something that most people don't know. The people who are involved in this project have already spent more than a half million dollars. And so if these heifers who are brought over from Texas, sent to Israel, uh, end up being disqualified, they've got to go back to square one with a waste of about a half million dollars. One thing I want to stress is even if the red heifer is sacrificed, that does not mean that the third temple has to be built right away. In fact, we've been repeatedly told that the sacrifices could potentially start long before the new temple is even constructed. And I want to let y'all know that Michael Snyder has repeatedly said, I want y'all to share this information. That's the only reason I'm pretty much relaying it verbatim because it's so important and I have a big platform to do this. So the following I'm going to read for y'all uh, comes directly from the website of the uh, Temple Institute. And y'all can check this out. I want to see if I can put it down below. Uh, it says, no, the temple is not building the temple off-site. We are building a stone altar off-site so when we have the opportunity when it actually arises we can move forward to its proper location on the mount now for the ark of the covenant once y'all hear that the ark of the covenant has actually been discovered it's going to be one of the biggest archaeological bombshells in human history and even more interesting on the official website of the temple institute they publicly acknowledge that they know exactly where the ark is located how about that 
It reads, while some claim to have evidence that the Ark is actually in Ethiopia, of course, moviegoers were treated to the fanciful version of the story in Raiders of the Lost Ark. In reality, the expression Lost Ark is not an accurate description for the Jewish people's point of view because we've known where it is all along. So the Ark is hidden and hidden quite well, but it's not lost. Tradition records that King Solomon built the first temple he already knew through divine inspiration that eventually it was gonna be destroyed. Thus Solomon was the wisest man in the world. He oversaw the construction of the vast systems of labyrinths and mazes and chambers and corridors underneath the Temple Mount that was really complex. Solomon commanded that a special place be built in the bowels of the earth where the sacred vessels of the temple could be hidden in case of approaching danger. So it's been recorded and they say they know today, right now, as we speak, they know exactly where the Ark is. The Ark has been there all along, my friends, undisturbed and waiting for the day that it actually gets discovered. By the way, there was an attempt that was made years ago to excavate toward the direction of the chamber, which resulted in widespread Muslim unrest and Muslim rioting. Why is that? Because they stand a great deal to lose if the Ark is revealed, y'all, because it'll prove once and for all to the whole world that there really was a holy temple and thus, that the Jews really do have claim to the Temple Mount territory. If you're wondering, by the way, the Muslims' view is that there never was a holy temple and that the Jews have no right whatsoever to this place. So when the Ark is revealed to the whole world, it will shock the entire planet. Michael Snyder ends by saying, there's a lot of scholars out there that believe Moses never existed. There's a lot of scholars out there that says the Ark was just a little box or a basket. Once the Ark of the Covenant is uncovered, y'all, it'll confirm Moses and the Ark of the Covenant really existed just like the Bible says. It'll also confirm that God really did make a covenant with the people of Israel at Mount Sinai. Wow. So when this is finally revealed to the whole world and they've discovered the Ark of the Covenant, this will change everything. Pretty big news. We wait every single day uh, and I have no idea when it's going to happen and it's all probably going to be in secret, but I'll tell you, it may be bring some dark stuff, like I was telling you in the last video, but God said it, so it has to happen. So just hold on, buckle up, and trust in Him. Hope y'all enjoyed this. This is going to be fun. We're going to watch it very closely. God bless y'all. Be good.